Good afternoon, Sanks. Thank you for coming out today for Bible study, Sunday Bible study. I have been teaching on what the will of God is. And um, a lot of people don't know what the will of God is for their life. And they uh, waste a lot of their lifetime trying this and trying that and then trying something else and find out that don't work. And then they try something else and find out that don't work. And they never find out what the will of God is for their life. Now, we were using the text in uh, Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse, actually verse 1 and 2, it tells us here, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. So he's telling us, the King James says, what is acceptable unto the God. And here in Amplify says, well-pleasing to God. Amen. Now, there's two errors in the church. We told you the last time I taught that most of the saints don't realize that they're in error by these two errors that are, have been flowing through the church for decades. One of them is everything that happens is the will of God. That is wrong. That is an error. Everything that happens is not the will of God. Well, how do you know that, brother? All you have to do is go to Romans, or not Romans, but Genesis, the first book of the Bible, right? Amen. And it tells you before sin and the curse that when God created the heavens and the earth, everything was good. And then from the time of the fall, all the way to the Bible, through the Bible, all of that stuff that was happening is not the will of God. Mm -hmm. and, curses. and you should also be able to recognize everything that happens in this world today, all the floods, the hurricanes, the tornadoes. And, you know, I heard people say when somebody's, you know, killed in an accident, well, that was God's will. No, it wasn't. And it even says in the Bible that, you know, you can accept the curses or the blessings. Yes, it does you say that. To make. A lot of things that happen to people is what they have chose to do. Right. And, um... Even when you look in the book of Revelations, he tells us that there's going to be no more weeping, no more death, no more, none of that. And crying. Oh, you know, and see, if everything happened was the will of God, why would he tell us to pray? Here's what he, why would he tell us to pray this? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Why would he tell us to do that? I mean, it don't make any sense, right? <laughs> I mean, you got to really um, get your mind renewed with the Word of God. Amen. And also, go with me to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Because uh, everything that happens is not the will of God. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish. No. That is his will. His He's not willing that any should perish, Amen. that all should come to repentance. Amen. Even here in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, the tenth verse, it tells us, trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyle be examples of what is most acceptable to him. Mm -hmm. 
Your behavior, expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. And the King James says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So it's up to us to find out what is acceptable unto the Lord. And go with me to um, 1 John. Because he said he wants us to have be have, having a reasonable service. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. And First John, the second chapter. Here's what the Word of God says. In the fifteenth verse, it tells us, "Do not love the world Amen. of sin." that opposes God and his precepts, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. That tells us a lot right there. Mm -hmm. So if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Then it says, for all that is in the world, the lust and sensualist cravings of the flesh and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father but are from the world. So we can know what the will of God is. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He says for us to find out what is acceptable. And then when you go back to Romans, the 12th chapter, and we find out that um, people tell us too, not only that everything that happens is the will of God, they also tell us that we can't understand what the will of God is. We, we can't understand, you know, his ways and his, his, you know, what is really the will of God. We can't work, work too in a sinful, finite state that we can't understand what the will of God is. Now, here in the second verse of Romans, the 12th chapter, it tells us something. Do not be conformed to this world any longer with his superficial values and customs. Amen. So he's telling us, don't be conformed. John just told us that do not love the world. Mm -hmm. And here is telling us, do not be conformed. That's right. Well, what does he mean by conform? I don't know if y'all uh, realize that when you conform to something, that means that you're going God, the same know. way that everybody else is for you, you, You're not doing nothing any different. You're conformed to what everybody else is doing. Right. And he's telling us, do not be conformed to this world. Amen. So we're supposed to not be conformed. And then he says, but be transformed Amen. and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, Amen. focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, mm -hmm. so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is. That's how you prove what the will of God is. Mm -hmm. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and perfect purpose for you. So this is, he's telling us here, mm -hmm. don't be conformed to this world. You know, it reminds me of when I was younger that um, when you used to, uh, you know, they used to make jello. Mm -hmm. They would warm it up on a stove and then they would the power, yeah. put it in these the containers, you know, Most. hard containers or whatever kind of containers they put it in. And then when it chilled, it would be conformed to that mold. Yeah, to the mold. The shape. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what's happening to a lot of us. Mm -hmm. We're being conformed to the world because we're not doing nothing to uh, have our mind renewed. 
it says have our mind renewed, right? Amen. This is how you're not conformed to a world system by the renewing of your mind. You got, you got to get your mind on God's Amen. will. It tells us here in Proverbs, the third chapter, because a lot of people say, well, how can I even know what the will of God is? Yeah. Well, no, we're going to help you out here right. because what's been going on in your life up until this point, what you've been doing is not acceptable to God. No, it's not. And also, you have been conformed to this world. And when they are, they reject it. And you've not been able to find out what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is for your life because you're so caught up in this world system. Mm -hmm. Now here in uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, Amen. first of all, it tells us, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord Amen. with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. That's the first thing. Trust is another word for faith. Right. You have to have faith in God continuously. Amen? Amen. And you can't rely on your own insight or understanding because when you do that, you conform to the world. Amen. Because everything you see is of the world. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And not only that, in Galatians, in that first chapter, it says that God has made those things that are visible and invisible. So invisible. We can't go by our own sight and understanding. We, we have to be with the Lord. Here's what the Bible tells us. It says, in all your ways, in all our ways. know and acknowledge and recognize Him, God. That's right, God. And He makes your path straight and smooth. Removing obstacles that block your way. Amen. See, that's what I mean by it's things that you can't even see is in your way. And there you are trying to do it on your own. Well, a lot of people say, Brother Carr, I just don't understand what you're saying. Can you make it everybody just else. a little bit plainer for mm -hmm. me? Because you read these verses, and, and I, I know God's word is true. Amen. But I need more explanation on it. We're going to give you that. Go with me to uh, Isaiah, the Amen. first chapter. Chapter we're going to We're going to renew your mind here today. <clears throat> now, in Isaiah, the first chapter, mm -hmm. the 19th verse, it says, if. Now, whenever you see if in the Bible, that means it's conditional. Right. If you do this, this will happen. If you mm -hmm. do something else, something else will happen. Amen. He says, if you are willing and obedient, mm -hmm. That's the main right. you shall eat the best of the land. King James says, you will eat the good of the land. So he said, if you are willing, you have to be, what do you mean by willing? That means that you have to have a willing heart. You see, that's first. This is Isaiah, the first chapter, the 19th verse. Oh, 19th verse, okay. Right. He's telling us, it's up to us if we have a willing and obedient heart. Amen. That's so true. That's the condition. That he's given us. Amen. And then he says, But if you refuse and rebel, Amen. you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen. So he's telling us something here how we can renew our mind. Amen. 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 That we can prove what is good and acceptable unto the Lord. But he's saying, First of all, you have to be willing Amen. to have your mind renewed. Amen. If you re refuse and rebel, you, what's going to happen? Are you going to eat the good of the land then? No, no. I'm not. You, you gonna, won't. You're going to be destroyed, devoured. That's mm -hmm. exactly what it says. Yeah. 
And this is why a lot of people go around saying everything that happens is the will of God and we cannot understand what the will of God is. Mm -hmm. He's telling us plain and simple, if you are willing and obedient. and obedient, well, how about if I'm just obedient? Well, what the condition is there, you get, if you're not, don't have the willing part, but you're obedient, that means that you are in the partial will of God. You don't have, the, you're not have the complete will of God, right? Because you left out part of it. But he says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And see, so many of the saints, once they're saved, that's as far as they go. They go to church every once in a while. And, you know, they that's it. But as you say, willing and obedient, and if you're obedient, then you should be willing. Because you got to be. You got to be. Well, a lot of people are willing. Mm -hmm. But, but a lot of people obedient. are not obedient. No, they're not. They just do just enough. They feel it's just, just enough, enough, but it really isn't. They got to go all the way. But he says, but if you refuse and rebel, you won't You won't see the good. No, you won't. Go with me to uh, Ephesians, the first chapter. There's no getting around that at all. They be complaining. Because know, God wants day. you to know what the will of God is. He really wants you to know what he he wants us all to know, and he don't want us to be conformed to this world, but be transformed formed by the renewing of our mind. So that we ourselves can prove what is good, that good That's right. and acceptable and perfect will of God, right? right? We can prove it to ourselves. Right. Now Paul here in Ephesians, the first chapter, the 19th verse, no, the 18th verse, let's go to the 18th verse, Ephesians 1, 18, he says, and I pray that the eyes of your heart, you mean we got eyes in our heart? We do. I mean, he can look in there, he see everything. The very center and core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectations to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people. Amen. So we have to pray that people's eyes will be open, mm -hmm. that their heart will be open so that they, they can know what the will of God is for their life, right? Right. Right, and it goes on with that 19 and then. What is over? Let's go over here to the fifth chapter. Okay. But see, I have to give you this the way I got it. Okay. You know, this is the way the Lord gave it to me. Amen. And I have to say what God is saying. Amen. Now, here in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, the 17th verse. He says, therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, we don't be foolish. Mm -hmm. We can understand what the will of the Lord is. Uh, let's go up to verse... Uh, he wants you to want us to grab it, though. Hold it. 16, he says, firmly. in verse 16, he says, making the very most of your time that's right on earth recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil Amen. so he says we shouldn't be wasting our time on something that's not going to help us no and no. he don't want us to be foolish because right. he he's gives us Opportunities. All these verses mm -hmm. in, in the Word of God mm -hmm. that we don't have to be that way. Right. Uh, Philippians. Let's see what it says over here. This is all through the Word of God. Well, you know, this this is a big subject. The more I look at it, the bigger it gets. And 
I mean, we'll just keep teaching on it because I find out as I'm studying this, there is a, was a few areas in my life that I was slipping. Mm -hmm. That's how we, how we know to keep ourselves and free. And when I started renewing my mind with the Word of God, that's how you know the will of God. Amen. By the Word of God. That's right. That's how you can know the Word His of God. Word is His word. will by the Word of God. In Philippians, the second chapter, the 12th verse, it says, So then, dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions and uh, enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, he says here, continue Amen. to work out your salvation. <laughs> that is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursuing spiritual maturity mm -hmm. with awe inspired fear and trembling, using serious cautions and critical self evaluation to avoid anything that may offend God or discredit the name of Christ. So he's telling us that we have to watch ourselves. Right. We have to work out our own salvation. Yeah, that's his will. He's not that's talking it. about doing works. Mm -hmm. He makes it real plain here. He says, that is cultivated. Bring it to full effect, actively pursuing spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. And the 13th verse actually tells us how to do that. He says, for it is not your strength. Amen. That's right. So he's not it's talking not, about working you know, in your strength. You don't have that kind of strength. But it is God who is effectually at work in you, That's right. both to will and to do. That is strengthened, energized, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. I mean, hallelujah. That says it all. Praise God. You He's so yourself. good. He's he, so we good. In, He's so doing this and doing good. that. Um, we in his strength, not our own. Let's go back mm -hmm. to Ephesians here. Because God is so good. He is good. Yes, he is. And he, time good. He's yeah. saying if you're willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. That's right. And what he wants us to do, he don't want us to do a partial will of God. No, that will all He wants us to do the complete That's will right. of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In Ephesians the fifth chapter, the twenty-first, he says something here. He says, "Always giving thanks to God the Father for all things." That's right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're supposed to always give thanks for all things. Amen. That's worship. That's worship. Then in uh, Philippians, the fourth <coughs> chapter. <coughs> Do you want a water? Yes. Well, you said go Ephesians 5. I missed the verse. 520. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Always give thanks to God. Make sure you uh, shut that real good, too, because. Uh, yeah, now we want to go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. Here's what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. He says, do not be anxious or worried about anything, mm -hmm. but in everything, every circumstances and situations, That's right. by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Amen. Worship in mm -hmm. Continuously to make your specific request known to God. Amen. Then when you go to Colossians, the third chapter, verse 16, Colossians 3, 16, the third chapter, Colossians, the third chapter, the 17th verse, it says, whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence on him, Amen. giving thanks 
to God the Father through him. Amen. Go with me to Philippians. Not Philippians, but uh, Thessalonians. The fifth chapter. First Thessalonians? Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians, <clears throat> the fifth chapter. Here's what it says over here. Uh, fifth chapter. Let's go up here to the 16th verse. Let's start there. It says, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Do we do that? A lot of times we don't rejoice always. You know, not all the time. Mm -hmm. Be unceasingly and persistent in prayer. He's telling us to pray. Right. We have to pray. He says, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continuously give thanks to God, for this is the will of God Amen. for you in Christ Jesus. So he's telling us something, what the will of God is for us in our life. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, give thanks in everything. Mm -hmm. Do we do that? No. Mm -hmm. So we're not completely in the will of God. Mm -hmm. We're partially in the will of God. 19 verses. Right, we're partially in the will of God. So if we are partially in the will of God, we're going to partially get the blessings. Amen. We're not going to get all the blessings. God is telling us to be thankful and for everything. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me last night. That's that's mm -hmm. worship in here. Thank you, Lord, Amen. for waking me up this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for putting food on my table. I mean, we don't think about these things, but all these things are coming from God. Thank you, Lord, for having clothes to put on my back. That's Amen. Thank you, Lord, for having a a career or a job to go to Amen. so I can have an income. Right. Thank you, Lord, for mm -hmm. keeping me in my right mind. Hey, that's amazing. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me healthy. That's right. Hallelujah. We're supposed to thank God for everything. everything. And a lot of times when I see people not thanking God, I say, well, they're just in the partial will of God right now. They don't know that they're supposed mm -hmm. to give thanks for everything. 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 And that's what he's saying here. For this is the will of God for you mm -hmm. in Christ Amen. Jesus. And we don't realize how much um, thanking God can really help you renew your mind. Amen. And, and that pleases God. It's the will. We thank the, Him. You know, just when like you a, parent, a parent when a child will say thank you. And God, God wants you to thank Him. He wants you to love Him. And we express that by the way we act and what we do. We love the world. We say we don't love him. You know. You know this. You know I I I, I see this all the time. Um, that and people we, we are do not thank the Lord. For true. everything, but they should be thanking the Lord for everything. Amen. Um, because God is so good. Mm -hmm. And see, here's another thing that I, I saw in Philippians, the second chapter. You go back there with me. Uh, because instead of us thanking God, here's what happens. Mm -hmm. In Philippians, the second chapter, the 14th verse. He says, do everything without murmuring Amen. and questioning mm -hmm. the providence of God. Which verse are you on? This is verse 14, 2 mm -hmm. Philippians 2, 14. Mm -hmm. he really means so we got to stop murmuring complaining about and complaining. It. We're supposed to be thankful. Thankful to God for everything that he's doing for us and we are Getting to this state right now that a lot of people 
they don't want to get thanks for their food. No, really. When they are out eating, when they, be eating anything, they don't no. give thanks for their food. When they're at home, they don't give thanks for their food. God we should us. thank God for our food. He says that we're supposed to pray over our food. So he bless it. So he can bless it and sanctify us so it don't hurt us. Because we don't know what we be eating now. We sure don't. They tell us anything. Red beef or something, you know. It don't be meat at all. I mean, we've got to be thankful. Like yeah. if you're sitting at a red light and you're getting ready to take off and somebody runs that red light and they don't hit you. Right. Thank you, Lord. You know, he don't want us to take. This is what he wants us to do. He just wants us to be thankful. Right. Thankful. And say it. And see, that's the that's. It says that that is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us to be thankful in everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. And you you know the other thing, like he even says in the Old Testament. The, one reason that the children, he allowed them to get hungry at one time so they would humble themselves. So when he sent the mamma down, they would have been uh, thankful that he had sent some food to them. But even with that, uh, many of them wasn't humble at all. They began to murmur, as you're saying in the New Testament. They were doing it in the Old Testament. They were murmuring against God, saying, you know, he, uh, he should have just left us in Egypt and being a slave instead of bringing us out here work. We don't even have food and water to drink. You know, they were complaining. And that angers God when we do that, when he's constantly blessing us and we complaining and murmuring. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, this is why we got we to get our mind renewed. Mm -hmm. He says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's right. We have to get our mind renewed. And he, he's telling us if you are willing and obedient. That's right. So you can be willing to do the will of God, but you're not giving thanks. Not giving thanks at all. <laughs> and we, I'm guilty of that myself, man. I think we're all guilty of that, that we don't thank God enough. You know, I was praying one day and complaining about our children, saying, yeah. you know, we give them money, we give them cars, we do all this, and they don't never say thank you half of the time. Right. And the Lord told me to stop. He said, did you thank me for your job today? Did you thank me for the car and the home that you have? Did you thank me? He said, that the money you give them is my money. He said, did you I, I got on up. He said, now get on up off the floor. He said, when you start being more thankful and grateful to me, maybe they will. He said, but you be taking well, this all this the work. This is what it says in he Romans. Said, you uh, do. He said, I, I'm the one who provided the, everything for you. The 12th chapter, Romans 12th chapter, that second verse, it says, do not be conformed to this world. Amen. Any longer with his superficial <clears throat> values and customs. Amen. So we can't be conformed any longer to this world system. No, we can't. It says, but be transformed and progress progressively changed as you must mature spiritually. So we got to mature spiritually. What I like about that verse. By the renewing of our mind. Right. What's good about the verse you read, he said progressively, because he know we don't just change like a snap. Of right. the finger. He, he's having mercy and grace on us. They're the but he's telling us something. He's telling us to focus on right. godly value. That's right. Right? It's the worldly values that get you in trouble. Because when you focus on godly values, mm -hmm. you can prove for yourself what the will of God is. That's right. And you won't go around saying everything that happens is the will of God. You'll, right. you'll stop nice. saying that. You, right. that. You'll stop saying that. And you'll stop saying, uh, I cannot understand what the will of God is. Right. He's telling you here this morning, so first of all, be thankful for everything. Amen. Be thankful that you had an opportunity to be born into this world. Be thankful that your parents took care of you. They did the very best that they could for what they know. For to what do, they right? Know to do. That's right. I'm thankful for my parents. Don't know I'm thankful for everything they did for me. I'm thankful that they provided shelter for me and food. That they, they put clothes on my back. That they sent me to school. I'm so thankful for my parents. I thank you, God, that you have given me 
a renewed mind. Amen. That's how. Because I haven't been thankful enough. I, I'm just so That's thankful that you took time at this particular time in my life Hallelujah. to slow me down and to let me know that I'm supposed to be thankful for everything. everything. Because that is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And I just didn't know that. I was inwardly living my life, mumbling and grumbling about everything and going on that I can't do this, I can't do that. And we're going to get into this. See, a lot of people are wasting a lot of their time doing different things that it's not even God's will for them to right. do. Mm -hmm. And then they try to do it and, and they say, well, these people are stopping me. These people are against me. And you're not even supposed to be doing that in the first place. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is not the will of God for your I life. You have actually rejected the will of God and, mm -hmm. for your life and refused to do the will of God for your life. Exactly. You haven't been willing to humble yourself and, 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 and say, God, show me the way, show me what I should be doing in my life, and I'd be so thankful if you just show me this, and when he shows you that, you rebel and refuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm not going to do that. That's beneath me. Right. I've been to school and did all of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we would just slow down a little bit in our life Amen. and say, like it says in Proverbs, the third chapter, Amen. it says, Trust and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, Amen. and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Amen. So we got to get our mind out of the way because it, it's corrupted with this world. He says, In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him. So we got to say, Lord, Show me. That's right. There's no verse in the Bible specifically that's going to show you what person you should marry. And there's no specific verse in the Bible, in the Bible so that's going to show you what career you should be in and all of that. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you start studying the Word of God, he says, in all your ways acknowledge and recognize Him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your uh, your way. Right. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent eyes and obedience. That's right. And turn entirely away from <laughs> oh, sin. Yeah, from evil. Turn entirely. You got me on that one. Completely. You see, we got to turn mm -hmm. entirely away from mm -hmm. it. It will be health to your body, your moral, your nerves, your soul, so That's your so muscles, all your inner parts. I mean, just wow. Everything. And refreshment, get. physical well being mm -hmm. to your bones. Mm -hmm. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your crops' income. Yes, yeah, that income. We are, if you really want to know what the will of God is, yeah. it's the word of God is the will of God. That's, and that's when, you, when you pray to God, you present your positions, petitions, and your request to God. He says, don't be anxious for nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. Be thankful. <laughs> be thankful. Because we don't know what we want. Be thankful. We don't. And what happens, the Holy Spirit, that is mm -hmm. true. The stuff we want may not right. be good mm -hmm. for us. The Holy know. Spirit will start leading and guiding you into mm -hmm. all truth. And you so right when you was in that First um, Thessalonians, that fifth chapter, that nineteen verse. Says, what is it? Do saying? not quench and so do, do quench or be unresponsive to the working and the guidance. Of the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit be guiding us. And it's it's he, once it's he telling us in us, and he, he'll tell here's, you here's who you're supposed to be with. Here's he the whole thing with the Lord. He will not force you to do anything. No, you have to be willing. You have to be willing and mm -hmm. obedient, and then you'll eat the good of the land. I'm gonna the stop Holy right Spirit there. We got you. so much more to go. The in Holy there. Spirit will take you right to it. 
Amen. And he'll tell you when you're around somebody, leave them alone.